Hey there, I'm Danny Trester from Trester Taylor in Rochester, Minnesota. This is Taylor It Yourself. In this video, I'm going to show you how to repair holes in denim and other fabrics. This technique can be applied to any garment, fabric, or hole size. It's no magic bullet, the stitching will be visible and it won't look like new, but if you do a good job of matching your thread and your fabric, you can camouflage the damaged area and give the garment longevity. I get asked if this can be done uh, using hand sewing, and while anything can be done using any technique, um, it won't hold up as well or lay as nicely as it will as if you use a sewing machine. To do this repair, you're going to need matching or contrasting thread, depending on the aesthetics that you'd like in your finished product, some scrap fabric, lightweight fusible, uh, scissors or pinking shears if you have one, and a couple of larger items such as a ironing board, an iron with some steam, and a sewing machine. For your scrap fabric, you can use a stockpile of old jeans or you can go to the thrift store. If you want something contrasting or matching, either one's fine. For this one, I'm going to use this old pair that I've already purposed for other repairs, but I'm going to use the back side of the fabric because the texture matches a little bit more closely to what the worn part of this knee is. If you're not sure what fusible is, it's a lightweight non-woven webbing that when you stick it between two pieces of fabric, it adheres them together using the heat and the steam of the iron. So this is going to help adhere our scrap fabric to our pants so that it's a little bit easier to sew when we get started. A popular brand of fusible, which you can get on a roll like this, is called Stitch Witchery, which you can get at Joanne Fabrics, Amazon, pretty much any fabric store in the Notions aisle is going to have fusible. Depending on the type of repair that you want to do, if you want to make it more obvious or less obvious, you might want to clean up the area a little bit before you adhere your scrap fabric to the back side. For this one, I want to try to camouflage it as much as possible, so I'm going to cut away the little white threads that are on there so that it looks as nice as it can. Even though it's an old pair of pants, I want to demonstrate that you can really camouflage that area and blend it in. So I'm going to just take my scissors and I'm going to snip away not too much of the surrounding fabric, but just enough that we get rid of some of the frizz and get rid of some of the frizz and the, the white strings. So now we're gonna cut our scrap piece of fabric and we wanna cut a piece that is big enough to cover not only the damaged area, but also the area around it because those areas are also weakened. So once you reinforce the immediate area around there, the next weak spot right next to where you've done the repair is probably gonna be the next spot to have a hole. So you kinda of wanna go around it enough so that you don't get a bunch more holes pretty quickly after you've done this repair. So if you don't have a pinking shears, you can use a normal scissors, but I like to use the pinking shears. It cuts at a 90 degree angle so that the fabric doesn't fray as much on the inside. So if we look at our leg here, we can kind of see this area around here is pretty weak. So we're gonna cut pretty big size, maybe four by four inches in order to cover that damaged area. So you kind of just take your pinking shears or scissors, whichever one. And cut a big enough scrap. Doesn't have to be exact, but you get the idea. All right, so that's probably good enough to cover that. And I've chosen this scrap because even though it's not exactly the color of the darker part of the pants, where the knee is, it's a little bit lighter, so this will kind of blend in a little better. And one more thing you can do to sort of prep the area is you can open the side seam to make it a little easier to get at. If you have a repair that's on the crotch area or on the upper part of the pants or at the very bottom of the pants, it's not necessary to do that because you can kind of get it under the machine. But at the knee, it's a little bit tricky because it's a smaller area and you kind of got to dig in there a little bit. So for the ease of this demonstration, I'm going to open the side seam so that you can see what I'm doing a little bit better and that it's not as much of a struggle. So to do that, you can take a razor blade or a seam ripper and pick the stitching on there and kind of open that. I'm gonna use a razor blade because it's what I usually do and it's a little faster for me that way. Just kind of 
get in the seam there and open it up. And you want to do it maybe six inches above or below where the hole is. You have plenty of room to get in there. Kind of want to clean it up a little bit. And now that we've got that prepped, we'll take it over to the ironing board and adhere our scrap fabric to the back side. First, you're gonna to wanna to turn your pants inside out. And then around the area where the hole is, you're gonna to wanna to take little pieces of your fusible and tear them off and kinda of place them around the hole. We also want to put a couple around because our piece of scrap is bigger than where the hole is and we want to kind of adhere it so that it doesn't flop around as we're sewing it. So it makes it a little easier. So on this one, again, I said I did in the back side of the fabric because it's a little lighter. You want to put the side that's visible down because obviously that's what's going to show through the hole. Kind of center it over there. So you want to set your iron to, on the setting that uses steam. If you're using jeans or a cotton fabric, you can go to the highest setting. Something that may have some polyester, you don't want to go as high because um, you can risk melting it. But this is cotton and you can go pretty high, especially if you're using steam. Um, I've got a professional boiler that has steam built into it. So it's going to go a little bit quicker than maybe what you have at home. You might have to hold it on there for a couple of seconds back and forth to make sure the steam gets through all the layers of fabric. So we're kind of just flattening the area and using the steam and the heat and the weight of the iron to flatten that and sort of glueify the fusible so that it holds the two pieces together. And you can double check that by lifting off and you can see it's kind of stuck on there. It's a little bit warm yet so it's peeling away a little bit but once you let it cool, it should lay nice and flat. So on the inside you can kind of see our scrap fabric visible through that hole. And now we'll get to sewing. When you get to your machine, you're gonna to wanna to set up your thread and your bobbin. The bobbin doesn't have to exactly match, so if you have one that's already wound with a similar color, you're not gonna see it because it's gonna be on the inside of the garment, but just as a precaution, because sometimes if your tension's off, that other color can pull through. I would say just as a precaution to wind the bobbin with the same color as you're using for the top thread. For your stitch length, you're gonna to wanna to set something that's not too long and not too short. You don't want it so short, that you are gonna be sewing in one spot and you might get a thread jam and you don't want it so long that over time it starts to wear and fray. You want it to be a little more durable. So I would say on my machine, you know, two, which is a two millimeter stitch, it would be a good distance, but you can try it on a scrap piece and see what works for you. Basically what we're gonna do here is go back and forth over the damaged area to reinforce it with the scrap that we put on. We're not gonna be sewing with a zigzag stitch, but it's gonna be a zigzag motion because we're gonna be going back and forth. So to start, you're gonna to wanna to put the fabric under the machine and it doesn't matter where you start because you gotta go all the way around. So about a half inch from where your damaged edge is is kind of where you wanna start. You wanna sink your needle and then sew forward a little bit. Just so you're a little bit past the edge there. And then you wanna use your reverse button and go back about a half inch. And as you're sewing, you're gonna to wanna to use your left hand to pull the fabric a little bit, and that's gonna shift the fabric from side to side, and that's what's gonna give you your zigzag pattern. So we will continue to go forward and backward all the way around. You can kind of guide the machine in a certain direction, but you may wanna lift up your foot and then pivot a little bit as you go around, because sometimes it's tricky to get around the curves. So now we're back to the point that we started. You just want to snip your threads off. You can be done with this repair at this point, but I like to add a little bit more reinforcement. I'd like to stitch around 
the edge of the damaged area because that can kind of fray up over time and stitching that just that very edge will help to keep it nice and clean. And I also like to stitch over the area where the patch is on the back side. We've cut a patch that's much bigger than what our hole is because the area around it is weak and you can kind of see there's some damage here. That's going to be the next spot to make a hole. So I like to stitch in long stitches over that whole area just so that there's an extra reinforcement. So if you want to put it back under your machine, we're just going to kind of lightly go back and forth in just a straight line instead of our zigzag and cover that edge a little bit. So we've got that all the way around. Snip your threads off again. And now we're going to do the longer stitches um, to cover the patch because the patch is kind of covers about this area here. So we'll want to fill that in as well. So we're basically going to do what we've done around the hole, but just in a larger format. So we're going to go all the way the length of the patch and back the length of the patch until the whole thing is covered. And you can kind of use your fingers to feel where the patch is and it'll tell you where the edge is. Then we're going to sew backward. There are other areas that need a little reinforcement like this area here. I'm just going to stitch over that just a hair more, just to give it a little more durability. So now our repair is finished and we're going to close the side seam and then secure the edges and we'll be done. If you're not familiar with a serger, it's a machine that has multiple threads that stitch at the same time and sort of wrap the edge of the fabric so that the little edges are cut off at the same time and you get a really nice clean finish on there. You can get similar thing with a zigzag stitch on the sewing machine, but it just doesn't have as much of a clean finish as it would with a serger. So if you don't have a serger, but you have a zigzag stitch on your sewing machine, we can use that to secure the edges. So what you want to do is take a scrap piece of fabric, try to set the machine to a stitch length that is about a quarter of an inch wide and about an eighth of an inch in between the stitches. You don't want to do it too narrow, zigzag, that it'll just be right on the edge and it'll pull off really easily. Um, and you also don't want to do it so close that you're just going to stitch in one spot and there's going to be a thread jam. You want it spaced out enough, but you also do want to encase the edges enough so that they don't fray as you wear and wash them. So we'll kind of play with our settings on our machine and practice a little bit. And that looks pretty good. That'll work just fine to secure those edges. So then you'll want to take the seam allowance of the pants and place the edge of the fabric to the position where the needle is all the way to the right. And then we'll stitch forward a little bit and backwards. And you want to sew that so that you're just catching the edge of the fabric. You might have a couple of threads that are kind of hanging out there. You can snip those away. Now that the repair is done and we got everything closed and cleaned up, we'll take it back over to the board for one more final press. One thing you can do before you flip the pants right side out is trim off any excess of the scrap that wasn't sewn down. This will keep it from rolling and kind of making a little bump as you wash and wear it. So if you kind of want to pull it away from the fabric in any place it's sewn or fused and not sewn, you can kind of cut that away. This one is sewn on pretty good. So there's just a few areas where you can snip that away. I 
And once you've done that, then you can turn them right side out and give them a little press. Sometimes the area is a little bumpy and wiggly, especially if there's some stretch in the jeans. So just use your steam and the weight of your iron to flatten that a little bit and kind of go over the seam that we took apart and put back together. And that's it. Now you've put new life in your favorite old pair of jeans. For more information and courses, including downloadable PDFs, visit our website at tailoryourself.com. And always remember, measure twice, cut once. Thanks for watching.